Presbyterian Church of Alpena. Holy God, like a rushing wind, your spirit moved upon the first disciples on the day of Pentecost, and like a purifying fire, your spirit seared their hearts and minds with the message of salvation. Send your spirit upon your church in this time and place. Stir up our courage and rouse us for prophetic witness that we may join with them to proclaim to the world your mighty deeds of power in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our psalm reading this morning is from chapter 104, verses 24 through 34 and 35b. How many are your works, Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There are ships to go to and fro, and Leviathan, which you formed to frolic there. All creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth, and it trembles, who touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our prayer of confession. 
God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sins. God of new creation, we confess that we have failed to trust in your bountiful goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you have distributed to us time, talent, and resources, and yet we refrain from using these gifts in your service. Lord, forgive our selfishness. Fill us with love and kindness that we may share the gifts you give us. Amen. Sisters and brothers, God offers forgiveness of our sins and the grace of repentance. Accept God's grace, repent of your sin, and be restored to abundant life. Prayer for Illumination Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, speak to us in the language of our hearts, that we may hear your word with understanding and answer your call with confidence. Amen. Our first reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. And John writes, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This, my friends, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. And it's chapter 12, verse 3 through 13. And Paul writes, No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers to another prophecy, 
to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another an interpretation of those tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one Spirit to drink. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. It is Pentecost, the day upon which we celebrate the birth of the church. The second chapter of Acts vividly describes the scene as tongues of fire coming down upon the apostles. We see manifestations of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible. The Spirit first appears in the second verse of the book of Genesis, where we may read, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And this is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the very second line of the Bible. Just reading those words, you can feel the tension that was in the air as if there was a buildup of a huge charge of electricity, and it was about to come down in a massive lightning bolt. And there is another image of the Spirit that I'm fond of. It appears in the scene where Jesus is baptized from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. In very simple words, John writes, at that same time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending like a dove. And there's something interesting about all of these appearances of the Spirit. They come at the beginning of something new, at the beginning of some great endeavor. In the beginning, in Genesis, the Spirit comes as God is about to embark upon the creation of the world. At the baptism of Christ, in the beginning of the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is just embarking upon his ministry. In the book of Acts, the Spirit comes down on the apostles just as they are forming the church. And so we might see the Spirit as a catalyst for new beginnings. But more than this, the Spirit can be seen as the energy that drives the work of God in the world. And this is why we often call on God to send us the Spirit to help us to do God's work in the world. In our reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, we find that the Spirit is more than the ignition that starts the major movements of the Bible. It is also a dispenser of gifts and talents. Paul writes in verse 4 of chapter 12, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. In this way, the Spirit initiates something in us. Without our even realizing, the Spirit enters us and brings out our abilities, focusing them, directing them for some special purpose. Now, I don't think that we should suppose that just because we do not live in the time of the apostles, that we do not have some powerful position in society, that we happen to be insignificant. That the Lord God, through the Spirit, will leave us bereft of powers because we were not of that age? No, God does give us powers. I have a, I have a nephew named uh, Spencer who when we get together during the holidays, he, he always starts out the conversation with a question. If you could have an insignificant, and he puts it in terms of mediocre superpower, what would it be? And it started some pretty interesting and sometimes hilarious conversations. 
Now my response to this question was to get someone to say exactly what they were thinking at that moment. But on second thought, I realized that the consequences of using that power could actually have devastating consequence and might result in people telling me things I really didn't want to hear. I think the Holy Spirit gives to each and every one of us far better powers than we might even imagine for ourselves. And those powers that the Spirit gives us are not mediocre. As Paul points out, to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So we are endowed with abilities that will help us to help each other. Some have organizational abilities, others can sew or draw, others are great teachers, some can decorate spaces, while others are good at reading liturgy or cooking or motivating others. In fact, each and every one of us is given a gift that allows us to contribute to the well-being of each other through the body of Christ, just as Paul says. You know, we have different gifts to different degrees, and this diversity of talent through the Spirit is what allows the church to do what it was meant to do, to bring the gospel to the world, to praise God, and to love one another. We all have something to contribute. If we all had the same talent, that would not bode well for the church, now would it? If we are all were just preachers, there would be no one to do the financial work. If we were all only good at mission, then there would be no one to facilitate fellowship. So it's a good thing that the Spirit does not come upon us all in the same way. But you know, I think the Spirit has given us all a specific gift. And Paul mentions it in verse 9. It is the gift of faith. It is the motivation that keeps us coming together and working to do God's work in the world. And this points to another interesting passage. We can read in verses 12 and 13, just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Gentile or Jew slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. So even though we are all different, we look different, we act different, and we all have different superpowers, don't we? We are all unified in one body of Christ. We have one head, and that head guides us to a better place in the here and now, and in the future heaven, where we will all come together again. And so there are various ways with the Spirit urging us, energizing us, and prodding us. Together we worship one God, our triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, with the talents that the Spirit gave us. Amen. Jesus.
bless us with your ever presence. You send your spirit down upon us so that we can be active in your world, moving the world and its people toward you. Blessed Lord, we need your spirit now more than ever. Now when we are filled with fear and at the same time filled with frustration and finding that positive action is so difficult to take. Fill us with your spirit. Make our minds discerning so that our activity is both effective and safe. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our leaders that they may make good decisions. We pray for leaders all over the world. May they see the advantages of peace and abjure war and strife. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Precious God, we thank you for the technologies you have given us that keep us connected with one another so that we can meet with family and friends halfway around the world. Thank you for technology that allows us to worship you in the spirit of fellowship, even though we cannot occupy the same space. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your protection and healing for all of those struck by illness disease, and the pain of any kind. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Now let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>